Well, welcome to another episode of Behind the Scenes at Baitworks. I've been uh, desk bound this morning, looking at financial forecasts, budget plans, expenditure, staff resources, etc. All the things you probably wouldn't associate with Baitworks. But the phone rang and it gave me a bit of a welcome respite from, uh, from spreadsheets and number crunching. And uh, a friend of ours, Jamie Cook, you probably know him from the Angling Trust, has, uh, has dropped me a text with good news. He's got a lovely, a big common in the net. Now, my day can often be interrupted with the necessity to go do some pictures for people, especially around the water park, because another part of my job is to post up our social media accounts, create content, media, editing, video, etc. So it's the best part of the job, to be honest. Like, who wouldn't want to see customers catching on our products? It never gets old, it never gets tiring. I love seeing happy faces. But today, as I say, I've got to have a bit of a respite. I've got to jump in the car right now, go and find Jamie, which is about 10 minutes away, uh, take some pictures for him. And at some stage, it might be out before this video lands. You'll see Jamie on our Facebook page, hopefully with a big smile, holding a lovely Cotswold carp. So yeah, typical day in the life of, of Mike. There we go, Sir Michael. <laughs> it's a pleasant surprise for a uh, Wednesday afternoon. As you say, it could be my biggest ever common, just uh, stalked from off the end of these pads here. It's got to be any. Lovely fish. I'd like to say, Jamie, there's absolutely no doubt that's the big common there. <laughs> it's sat in that net like a, like a baby whale, submarine, <laughs> just bobbing around. I just, you know, you start, I don't know the stock very well in the lake. So you start to doubt yourself a little bit, but I was watching it thinking it's got to be that fish. Yeah, um, and there was a nice mirror with it as well, but it, they wouldn't settle on the spot coming in and one. It was only when two came in together that got the pickup. So um, yeah, very happy. Yeah. I, I blame it all wholeheartedly on the board shorts. Now these aren't quite board shorts. Oh, no, no, they're, they're, they're a bit more grown up. Yeah, I reckon he's got more... his lucky shoes on because he's normally having his flip flops. Is that alright like that? Mate, that's a great way to interrupt my lunch break. What an awesome fish. It is indeed. There we go, Sir Michael. Ooh. What an awesome fish. That's huge. Oh, the slipper. Absolutely huge. Let me uh we we'll slip her back if that's okay. Look. Yeah, of course you can. Let's have a look. It's a big carp that's made me very happy. Well, welcome to the factory. It's very busy. It's Monday morning. Loads going on as always, but it wouldn't be a behind the scenes if we didn't feature the fish tank behind me. Um, always testing stuff in the fish tank and it's really good for base reactions so there's been arguments in the past that they're not valid because they eat anything and that's that's true the fish will eat anything in the tank however when you're testing liquids um, particularly flavors and hydroslates and other products it gives you a really good base understanding base reading of what's attractive and in some cases what's not so very similarly, you can look at the fish and see if they're stimulated by what you've put in there. Um, so I've just done the salt. I think it's a really interesting one. I've tested salt for many years, so I know what reactions I'm going to get there. Um, in terms of attraction qualities, very, very poor in my experience. So we've done it with the Himalayan rock salt, which is the one typically everyone uses. I've tested other salts, but that's the one I'm, I've done today. And you can see from dissolving it into a little beaker. Right, so there's our Himalayan rock salt. And what we're gonna do now is put some, this kettle's not boiling hot water, but it's been in, it's warm. So it will speed up the process of uh, diluting all of these little granules in the water. So we have like a water solution. Really, really important when you're putting in for tank test. I don't want no visual stimuli, because if they see little white flecks going down through these little bits of rock salt, they instinctively go and grab them and taste them. So I just don't want any of that. I want to basically get a solution there and be able to pour that in and step back and then watch a, watch a reaction. So pour this in here and get this all dissolved. So 
straight into the tank. I'm getting very, very minimal reactions from the carp. Now I should be seeing the fish tasting the water column um, because of the, the heavy nature of salt, it will sink to the bottom of the tank. But even the solution is dense, denser than water. So you will see the fish sort of maving on the bottom. Um, and we're just not seeing that. So for me, salt wouldn't be number one for my um, inclusion for attraction properties. Now, I contrast that with a product that we sell here, which is our sea stim uh, liquid and we do it in the powder version, but I've done the liquid form. And again, I've dissolved that into a little water solution. So just as a comparison, I'm gonna put something in now that I know they really, really like, and that is our sea stim uh, liquid, just so you can see the different reactions between the two different products. Put that into the tank. And by stark contrast, you see a feeding reaction. The fish get very excited. They're circling, looking for food. They're maving the water. And also they're going down and maving the, the bottom of the tank where some of those signals have fallen down. So again, they give you really good base signals, really good reactions, and it tells you if you're on the right path. And what's really interesting is when you test flavors, because flavors, you either get, an inst you either get a reaction or you don't. And it's really interesting to see that. So we'll bring that in the future. But yeah, I hope you find it a little bit interesting. For me, I'm always popping things in the tank and I'm sure we'll do more as the series progresses. The guinea pigs. The guinea, they are guinea pigs, but in actual fact, we, um, we change those fish every six months to a year. And I think it's important to change the fish over so we, we have a new set of fish coming in the spring or in the winter and those fish um, have not seen any of the chemical stimuli that we've put in over the year. So there's no conditioning going on, anything like that. So then we get a number of reactions from those fish and they serve their purpose and then they will move on and we'll get the next set in. So, uh, so yeah, rotation is key for the old fish here. And um, yeah, all good. I think uh, my next test will be an Earl Grey tea bag. I've always wanted to do Earl Grey. So uh, we're popping Earl Grey in there and see what's the most popular teas. Mate, <laughs> nothing likes Earl Grey, not even carb. Mate, I'll tell you what, out of all the teas, I reckon, I've tested teas before, and I reckon all grey will be um, be the one. I reckon. You watch. Why? Watch. Well, it's using um, bergamot, isn't it? So essential oil. Uh, it's basically the the rind of uh, of oranges. We know that's attractive in essential oils. We know that that that's a, that's, that has been a trigger. So I reckon if I test uh, Yorkshire versus all grey, I reckon we're going to get a winner. I reckon it'll be all grey. That means absolutely nothing in the world of tea. <laughs> I know. Well. Oh mate, I tell you. You can't get supporters by testing Earl Grey tea bags on carp. Well, mate, it'd be a, it's another plus for the Earl Greys. For those guys who handle their tea bags and everything and worry about um, odours getting on their baits, be an Earl Grey tea, uh, tea drinker. But we'll back that up with science and we'll put it in the tank. <laughs> Next up was a date in the calendar that me and Mark were really looking forward to. Now, if you look and follow the Angling Trust, you will see they auction off fishing experiences each year as a way of raising funds to support the great work they do. Now, back in 2021, me and Mark pledged 24 hours of our time, combined with a hefty bait package at an exclusive lake in the Cotswolds, to the Trust to auction off as described. The successful bidder was a lovely chap called Terry, and the trip couldn't have gone any better. Some lovely carp were caught, and Terry left with wet nets, big smiles, all in support of a great cause. Lovely, job. Lovely fish. 22 10. That's awesome. Well done Terry. Have a big smile. Now, wind the clock forward another year and due to the funds raised for the trust, we once again offered the same package to be auctioned off. But what we didn't expect was the same name to appear as the winner. Clearly, we hadn't put Terry off last time around. So once again, a date was set and Terry would be our guest for the next 24 hours. The objective was simply to help Terry catch, let him pick our brains on all things carp, and of course, feed and water him as best we can before loading his car up with enough bait to bottom out the suspension. Well, Terry's collected his bait, and I guess all good fishing trips well, they do in my book anyway. Start with a hearty breakfast. So, 
I'm just reversing that at Baitwoods HQ. Terry's gonna follow me down to a cafe just on the end of the Spine Road. And we're gonna have a breakfast, set us up for the day. And then we're gonna head to the lake and see if we can catch Terry a carp or two. The weather is terrible, but we like a challenge. And uh, yeah, with our bellies full, bit of energy in the tank, I think we've got a chance. Terry's got like about 30 kilos of bait in his passenger seat. So uh, hopefully that's a good start to the day. So the adventure starts now. <laughs> well, that's how you start the day. Eggs, <laughs> Eggs Benedict's the Cotswold way. And if the food's anything good by Terry, we might catch a carp in a minute. Yeah, that would be good. Just that, waiting that for Brian, but he uh, is fashionably late. So we are going to carry on eating our breakfast and he's going to have to play catch up. <laughs> right, let's tuck in, mate. Well, like an absolute donut, I've managed to leave Baitworks HQ, clearly with breakfast on my mind, and left the bait on the side. So, uh, John, a quick, a quick detour, go and pick up the goodie bag of bits and bobs that hopefully will help us put a carp on the bank. And uh, yeah, then head to the lake. So uh, Terry's behind me. So we're just literally a couple of, literally a couple of minutes around the corner. So not too much of a detour, but uh, yeah, trust me, come fishing Terry without no bait. Hello mate, after you. Cheers buddy, thank you. Cheers mate. I left the bait on the side. Let's start again. See you in a bit. It's all got very exciting and very tense very quickly because when I walk around we put a few handfuls of pellet on a few different spots and one of the spots underneath this tree up here there's loads of fish just turned up just out of nowhere so uh, we've got a lot of stuff on the other lake but we're going to rip around here with a rod now and Terry's going to hopefully drop one in and hopefully make a chance so fingers crossed. Come on let's try and make it happen. Are you ready? Are you ready, Terry? I'm ready. I can feel it. Yeah. <laughs> I can feel the buzz. Yeah, come on. Let's We're go going for it. for it. Go for it. Oh, there's fish all over this uh, margin spot here. Flicking the odd pellet down there, but there's, yeah. they're quite cute. They're coming in in sort of ones and twos, so. If we can get that rig in though, mate, Terry's got a chance quick, I reckon. Yeah, there's fish down there now, so. Right, I'll go back and help and get that rod in, and yeah. I reckon there's a chance double quick. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this was a team effort. Mark was sat in the tree watching and observing the fish gliding into the marginal slope, while me and Terry pulled a rig down as tight to the bank as we dare. Mark gave us a little thumbs up, and we dropped the rig, and we didn't even have time to ship the pole back before Terry's rod literally got pulled out of his hand, and it was battle on. Well, what's happened, Tal? The fish has made the weed. Oh no. We need a boat. Wait, that didn't take long at all though, did it? Yeah. I just literally, we've, we've unshipped five poles. Sections that's of poles. That's as far back as it had gone. And it literally, uh, before we know it, it was it whizzed round it in my hand. It just went round in my as you said, oi. It's like, Terry, it's off, it's off. I blinked and it had gone. Yeah, it doesn't always happen that fast, I tell you. But that's the beauty of knowing what you're doing, isn't it? If you find the find the spots. Yeah. Find where they are. Well, Mark's gone to get the boat. This is a 50-50 whether we'll get this one in or not. But fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, mate. That's it. Wind when he gives you a bit of slack. He's free. That's it. As the boat rattling, it's still got its light. It's still got. If he's got slack. that, yeah, okay. If you can take line, that's the main thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. And then you can hold the spool, can't you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, mate. Yeah. I always put my finger on the spool, so you can sort of control it. And if he goes, then you got it in control, don't you? Mark, that didn't even take. I watched it take the boat. I don't think it was even 30 seconds. Yeah, I watched it spook off the bottom, then I thought, well, that's a bite. Did you? Yeah, and I heard the beep. Yeah, yeah. It's quite cool to watch it. Yeah, it's brilliant. I'm not too sure who had the most adrenaline, me, Terry, or you, Mark. Yeah. Hey, it's awesome oh, watching trust it. Trust me. 
<laughs> yeah, he's not going anywhere now. It's all safe. Yeah, it's rounding the edge, and uh, we're getting there. Yeah, it's safe. It's a little bit. This is a battle royale. I just hope the fish is as big as it feels. Let him go. We go. Yes! Yes! Yeah. Teamwork! Yeah. Bait works! <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous fish. Well, you can see Mark sailing off into the distance. Obviously, his assistance with the boat was vital. But then Terry had to do well. I'll let you take up the mantle, mate. How, how arm making was that? It was arm making. It's really weird because it's such a clear water. And I'm not used to fishing clear water. You kept seeing it and thinking, oh, only a little bit to go. And then it just took another five yards off. Incredible. Mate, I'm so pleased that we've caught on so quick. Um, how That rod was on the spot, I reckon, 30 seconds? I, I, yeah, 30, 30 seconds maximum. I'd literally turned around to put a piece of pole back as we were shipping it back. And yeah. the next thing, it's like, panic! Panic stations. <laughs> oh, brilliant, mate. At least you can enjoy what our fish and chips. What a result. Yeah, well done, mate. So pleased for you. It's a cracking fish. That's Mate, you've seen it all unfold, didn't you? I did, yeah. I was up the tree and uh, the algae's dropped out of the water because we've had quite a lot of rain, so there's been a temperature shift. And uh, I was watching these fish come in and I watched this small group of fish, first of all, when he, when we put the bait down. I thought, oh, it's going to be a small one. And all of a sudden, these two fish from the back came in, bigger fish, coming up the shelf, going towards the rig, or where I thought the rig was. I saw head shaking it bolt off, then I heard the old buzzer go. So, uh, <laughs> mate, it was great to watch that. Right. Amazing. Yeah, lovely team effort. All right, what we do, Terry, just claps the old net down. Wind him up a little bit so it's not such a drop. And then pull it out, just gonna check the, check the fins all down and aligned. Yep, he's flush. And really importantly, we're gonna take him out with the head weighted down the bottom. So if he does thrash now, Everything on the head, not on the tail, importantly. There he is, mate. Look at that. Whoa, lovely. What a fish. Yeah, mate. Mega. There he is. Look at that. Yeah, take that out. That's beautiful. That is a lovely fish. Yeah, mate. Smashing. Nice dark colour. It is, isn't he? Lovely. Really dark. Right, what I do then, Terry, if I lift the fish, I'll just momentarily lift it. Do you want to yep. just swing just that net? Pull the net out yeah. the way. Pull them right away. There we go. Net's gone. Oh, he's going to go then. I'll we'll just swizzle around a little bit. Cover the eye. There we go. Love the pin scales on his tail, Mark. Yeah, yeah it's a tiny little detail that. there, isn't it? Yeah, like very difficult to pick up, yeah, but they're beautiful, aren't they? Mm. There's a couple just there, isn't there? Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look, like yeah, a little smiley little face. Three. Yeah. Yeah. A little paw print. It's not smiling as yeah. much as mine. <laughs> well done, nice. Mate. Right then, here comes the rain. Moment oh, of truth. No. Let's see what we got. The Wheel of Fortune. Roll in. Nineteen fourteen. <laughs> Stand on it. Stand on it. It's what it is. Put a lead in it. <laughs> Give him a boilie. I reckon if he'd have been there feeding for another five minutes, that'd have been twenty pound. But hey, mate, we'll uh, we'll take that all day long. So that is sixty-six. Sixty-six centimeters. Yeah. Lovely. Mate, just for the viewer's perspective, what, what are you trying to determine? Obviously, how much length would you expect them to grow a year? Yeah, well, these fish, they're young, um, so they can be good doing like two to four centimetres a year. Um, so it's always good just to keep keep an idea. Sometimes the the weight isn't a true reflection because they've spawned or they're coming back from spawning, but length is. So, uh, yeah, we mark this up. This one's 60, 66, wasn't it? Yeah, 66. 66, 66 centimetres, and we'll see what it is next time. Yeah, nice one. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately, we're not growing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, we're, we're growing the other way. We're growing that way. We've done our growing phase. Yeah. <laughs> Sim. 
Now that's Lovely. it. That's what we wanted, mate. Yeah, mate. That's a great start. Yeah, well done, and he's behaving. He is, mate. Yeah, impeccably. Lovely, mate. Fantastic. Yeah. A couple of minutes. Well, not even a couple of minutes. A few seconds in the right spot, and off it goes. Mega. Off you go. That one is now called Tell. Well, as you can see, fish and chips is going to be hand delivered to Terry and Mark. It's been a pretty crazy day, but uh, Terry's pledged a lot of money to fish with me and Mark, although I'm not fishing. Um, obviously going to a great cause, the Angling Trust. So it's only right that I basically try and let him not lift a finger, try and uh, deliver all this to him and make sure that he has a wonderful time with Meals on Wheels and a few carp thrown in for good measure. So we've got three cod lots, curry sauce and chips. Um, mushy peas, mushy peas, yeah. How can I forget the mushy peas? But I tell you what, after 24 hours being uh, the Sherpa, the cook, the, uh, the runner, it's exhausting. But hopefully it'll all come good. I mean, we've caught one carp already, which is great. And if we can catch one tonight, well, if Terry can catch one tonight, hopefully it's 24 hours with me and Mark will be a memory that he'll smile upon in the future. I mean, it's the second time he's come, as you probably, as we've already mentioned, he's, uh, he's bid for this lot twice now. So he's fished with us once before, so we couldn't have put him off that much. But let's try and get these meals on wheels to the guys. Let's get some food. It's been a long day. Hello, we've got some meals on wheels. Anyone order fish and chips? You got a seat, mate. No, but I've got three cod lots. <laughs> Look at Terry, waiting for it. Waiting for it. Where you been? Life Where is you good. been? I'm Life... wasted away. Life is good. Hey, life's really good. Mark Bryant swim, mate. looks like a bomb site as usual. It is, mate, yeah. Manic, isn't it? Oh my god. <laughs> Look at this. That looks like a man that's literally exploded his gear all over the swim. Just emptied out all the boxes. Just... <laughs> to, to be fair, Mike, right, most of them were emptied out by you. Yeah. <laughs> like, where is everything? Right. Let's eat, shall we? Let's eat, mate. Let's eat. Let's do it. I did say to Terry, would he like curry sauce on his fish and chips, but he nearly swore at me. Mate. It's not a London thing, tell no? No. Why not? <laughs> we could have some jelly deals on you on it. Jelly, could, jelly, jelly deals. Jelly deals is from North London. I'm from West London. What's, what's your delicacy? Oh, I can't even pronounce the, the name. McDonald's is my delicacy. Oh, <laughs> Brown our way, that's it. Well, with dinner consumed, we sat back behind the rods, full of anticipation. Did tonight just have one more bite in store for us? Hmm, time would tell. Well, as dawn broke, all good things come to an end. But Terry did indeed have another bite. 2 a.m. that morning, his rod signalled a really fast take, but unfortunately, it was one of the smallest commons in the lake. But hey, you can't win them all. And once again, it was time to wrap it all up for Terry to get back on the road because he had about a three hour drive back. I'd just like to thank Mike and Mark for uh a thoroughly entertaining full, uh, 24 hours. Feels like 48. It, 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 uh, the amount of effort that you've put into helping me catch, it, it is 48 hours crammed into 24. Yeah. Uh, but it's a, it's a fitting um, end to the, uh, the auction process through the Angling Trust. Uh, it's nice to support them for all the work that they do. Uh, it'd be good if everybody else can support them in their own way. Not everybody can pay the auctions, but uh, they are extremely worthwhile caught a lot of fish, learnt a lot, had a really good time and the Angling Trust deserves all of our support. Uh, the more people that can get involved in that, the more good work we can carry on seeing them do. Uh, so Jamie, on behalf of most anglers, thank you very much indeed. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it and I hope the auctions go well this year. There you go mate. 
Breakfast is served. Mate, you look like a waiter. <laughs> a, car a carp ingredient waiter. <laughs> oh, there we go. Mate, you look like I've sat you down and you're into uh, mastermind, specialist subject, spoily ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that wouldn't be too out of place on my kefir in the morning, this, and a bit of nut meal and all that. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. But texture, I know we get asked, Mike, don't we, uh, questions about texture all the time. Uh, what are those little bits in the bait? Um, particularly after a night out in the pond, baits come back in, sometimes they've got little bits of stuff like swelling and sticking out of them as well. And for me, I've always placed great emphasis on having texture in the bait. Um, for good reason, because I want water penetration going into the bait. I think a lot of the commercially rolled baits today, um, they're too firm in their structure. You know, if we're boiling with ultra fine ingredients and then boiling with, with eggs or whatever the binder system is and skinning the bait, those baits can have very poor water ingression over the course of 24 hours, 12 hours, or however long you're fishing. Um, and I find these ingredients that I've just laid out here on the plate help with water ingression. Really, really important. We've we ticked the box with nutrition, hopefully in the baits with other products. So products like um, fish meal or any of your marine derived proteins, your milk, milk proteins. So we've ticked the box nutritionally elsewhere, but these ingredients I think are vitally important for not only water penetration, but also um, they help the bait pass through the gut transit line to help break up. Um, and also they provide some other key um, elements like, um, like for this one, an example, we've got seaweed meal here, brings in some um, vitamin and mineral supplements. Um, so I just go around the circle. These are, we use lots of coarse ingredients in, in the bait. Um, they go in at a, a percentage, a small percentage in the bait range, um, but they provide important functions. So we've got sort of a nut meal there, so very, very coarse nut meal. And then we got the old classic, which is hemp seed. Now, this is the dry hemp seed before we cook it. We cook it and then we put it into the bait hole, which if we were, I'll come on to the rolling in a sec, but that provides an absolute nightmare for rolling bait. And then we've got here, this is a, uh, a bird seed mix that I put together myself. I basically have it all pre-blended, I bring it into site and I then grind it all down to the, the, the mesh size that I want. And it's again quite coarse uh, for the reasons sort of I've talked about before. So these, all, these ingredients go into our bait range and what's really, what's really tricky is how to actually roll the bait as well because in co most companies will roll on what's called a, a two roller system. So Let's put this down. We've got our two roller systems over there, which we do pop-ups on and stuff, because it's a finer mix. We can put it through that. Uh, but essentially, a two roller system, if you imagine there's two big wheels that come together, and they almost touch. So they're almost touching. There's about half a mil, a mil at the most, but half a mil between the touch points of the rollers. Now, when you extrude a sausage and put the sausage down through, then obviously it's got the grooves in to make the round baits. The bait goes through under its own gravity almost, and you can you can speed one roller up, slow one down to help pull it through, but essentially it's going through with a bit of gravity. Now, if it hits a bit of seed in that mix where the two touch points are, the two rollers come together, the sausage will jump out. And when you're trying to roll tons of bait a day commercially, that is an absolute headache, an absolute nightmare if your bait's basically everything's going in. So if you have uh, a bait with really coarse ingredients like, like the ones I've shown you, they will be jumping out all the time. So that is why a lot of commercial baits are rolled and they are um, quite fine in their texture and very, very little seed content to them, which, which is, you know, is, is, is fine. They catch plenty of fish, but I find these ingredients brought into a bait range, uh, particularly ours, aid the, um, water penetration which then brings in brings out all the uh, water flushing in means water's coming out essentially um, and we've got all of our solid ingredients working so you want to get bait into the bait you want to get water into the bait as quickly as possible and prolonged over over time so the roller system uh, that we've got I was 
very lucky, right place, right time, but I knew that I needed something um, very particular to roll with these coarse ingredients here. Now, ours is a, a free roller system. So essentially we've got two rollers at the bottom and then we've got a third roller that's moving and it's coming in and out, in and out. And when it comes out, a sausage goes in and basically it's squeezing in. So if you imagine we're forcing that paste into a ball inside if you imagine like a little triangle, inside that pocket, we're forcing it into a ball. So it, it can't get out, it's being forced, span, span, span. So that means we can use all these coarse ingredients because the bait can't jump out because it's locked in, locked in place. When the arm comes out, the bait is formed under its own momentum, it falls out. And that's why the machines we have here at Baitworks means we, we are not limited in the ingredient portfolio that we can use. We can literally put anything in the baits of a coarse nature with big mesh sizes to them over sort of two, three, four mil if we want. Um, and we'll be able to roll a bait and get it to come out the other end and not have any, any nightmares trying to roll bait, you know, tons of bait a day. So um, yeah, the machines work really well for that function. And because of that, it opens the door then for the ingredients that we can use. So I've been, been obviously uh, around, around these, um, but you know, the, the, the tiger nuts mills, the, the hemp seeds, bird foods, and your seaweed mills all bring in an important role, um, but it's all about getting water ingression overnight into the bait to allow all the good uh, attractors and your solid ingredients inside the bait to then flood out because we don't want to seal it up. We don't want a ball that's just sealed on the bottom and not attract, not pumping out attraction. So we want pumping attraction from the minute it goes out to the minute you leave your session. And even when the bait's left out in the lake, it's still pumping out attraction. So that's the reason we, well, we use lots of coarse ingredients. And as long as we've got the machines here and they don't break, then that'll always be the case. Yeah, I like it, mate. But I think another important part, which I've always put a lot of emphasis on, um, and it doesn't get spoken about so much, but I also think it plays such a crucial role in the underwater world that we all obsess over, um, is, the, is what happens when carp eat bait. Because I think noise, underwater noise, we've all seen carp, haven't we? When they take a mouthful of hemp, for instance, or, or a tiger nut, they'll leave the spot chewing it, as they do, because it's in their pharyngeal teeth and yeah. some ingredients need to be chewed. Um, and then so, as soon as they do a lap of, of, of say a weed bed, nearby weed bed, they come back in with say three more of their friends. Yeah. I've always thought, and I've seen it myself, observed it, you know, 100% where the coarse texture in our bait also creates that crunch factor. Yes. Which I think plays a pivotal, you know, pivotal role in, 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 in attraction in its own right. Good point. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Mike. Yeah. Um, yeah, the crunch factor, exactly, exactly that. When, you can actually measure that, can't you, in tanks with microphones and that. You can hear the fish crunching, particularly on something like a tiger nut, but even like a pellet as well, which is yeah. quite dry. Um, but yeah, um, you know, imagine hemp seed being crushed. All these ingredients that I've just shown here will make noise and make sound underwater. So yeah, you're right, quite right, mate. It's ticking, it's ticking a lot of boxes. It's, it's allowing water penetration, it's creating sound. You know, and let's not forget the carp's natural diet is generally snails, shrimps. Crunchy. All crunchy, of crunchy yes. All, yeah. of, all of texture. And we're yeah. sort of mimicking that, what we do. It's almost like that texture in a bait, because we can add so much texture into our baits. And you can just see there, we'll have a look at that handful of raw marine you've got just there, freshly yeah. rolled. Yep. Um, you, it's almost like carp have this addictive nature to texture as well. Yeah. Like you say, because all their natural diet is crunchy stuff and uh, yeah. they just seem to, they seem to love chewing things, don't they? They do. Yeah, it seems yeah. to like stimuli them in their own right. Yeah, yeah. yeah Absolutely. It's, it's an interesting one. But yeah, you've got some raw marine there, but just look at the texture of them. Yeah. I mean, let me just try and zoom in, but. You know, that's what we're talking about there. You've got lots of, um, you see like the seaweed meals on the outside. You've got the tiger nut and a bit of the bird foods as well. There's a bit of chunk sticking out. So in, in the morning, that wheel in the tank, there'll be stuff swelling up and you'll see the bait swell as well. So, which is a really good sign. You want that to happen. Yeah, also uh, it rings true when you put one of those in the margins because the uh, attraction is so uh, instant and, and it's leaking out, the, the naturals just seem to attack it, don't they? Exactly Very that. quickly. Exactly Very that. Quickly. Yeah, exactly that. You see lots of snail. Everything gets drawn into the area with these type of baits because there's so much flooding out from them. You know, these ingredients that I've said, the coarse ingredients act like a pump. So you've got water coming in, 
and then is pumping stuff back out the other way. So that's really, really important. So uh, yeah. yeah, all those ingredients have a, have a massive, massive major role in, in, for me, part of the bait attraction package. Brilliant. Well, sorry to interrupt your day, mate. That's I'm right. Busy. No, and it's it is good, Monday. Mate. Yeah, it is Monday. We've all got plenty of loads to do, haven't we? Always. And I haven't even, uh, <laughs> I haven't even seen you have a cup of tea yet, which is usually kickstart the end. Yeah, of the, the guys are a little bit slack this morning. Usually by now, we've had probably the kettle's been boiled at least twice. Yeah. So it must be busy out there. Well, that's good. They're all working hard. So uh, yeah, I might have to put the kettle on for them, which is a rarity, I know. Yeah, mate, I'll <laughs> leave you to it. All right. Cheers, mate. For that. You can uh, go and deliver that to table number two, please. Table number two, please. Yeah, to, uh, the starters of coarse ingredients. Nice hummus dip to go with it. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I just thought I'd grab a bit of paste. You can see there, this is our raw marine. And the texture on that is just, yeah, commercially a nightmare to roll, probably. But all the ingredients in there, like I've said before, all in for a very, very, very good reason. But look at that, there's loads going on in that one. Mate, that looks like a cart banquet, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, look at that. Christ. Probably flatten it like that. Sometimes you can see it a bit better. And that's another subject we don't speak about enough, like paste. Nobody uses it, Mark, do they? Oh, mate, I'll be using plenty of this in the winter. Mate, paste is so oh, underused. Yeah, isn't it? no, absolutely. Absolutely. Sorry, mate. Made your hands go absolutely yeah, stinky, man. That's, that's all right. Get that back in the mixer. Back in the mixer, rolling some bait. Well, that's it. That concludes another episode of Behind the Scenes at Baitworks. Now, if you enjoy it or you want to see anything specific on future episodes, just let us know in the comments below. We're always happy to take suggestions. There might be things you want us to delve into, certain bait topics that you might want us to discuss in the future. Just let us know in the comments. But equally, I know that tank tests always intrigue people. They sort of spark a real deep interest in terms of what attraction looks like, cart reactions, certain things you might want us to test. And again, if you've got any ideas about what you want to see in a tank test, let us know below. We'll always take suggestions. So we might not do it next month, but we'll definitely try and include a couple on future episodes. But for now, it's a really busy day ahead. I'm just about to wrap things up here. We've got Gaz Farron coming down this afternoon because we're working on some new hook baits with Gaz. They've been in the research and development stage now for a long while. But today, once again, gives us free license to play around with potions, lotions, liquids, powders, hydroslates, you name it. We're gonna have it all out on the desk once again. Lots of trials, lots of test batches, lots of one egg mixes. It takes me back to being a kid, really, making bait in my mum's kitchen. Always used to be like a one egg mix, didn't it? And uh, I'd ruin the cutlery, ruin the pots and the pans. I'd absolutely stink the kitchen out, only to be told off, but go away with a, a little pocket of gems to try at the local park lake. But today we're doing a lot of that with Gaz. So it's free reign to do it. We can make as much smell as we want, but ultimately, at some point in the not too distant future, we hope, the products that we will eventually decide upon will be on this shelf and you better get your hands on it. But more on that at a later date. But for now, busy day ahead. Hope you've enjoyed the episode and we'll see you soon. <laughs>